What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about rheumatic fever and endocarditis, myocarditis and pericarditis, pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponade, cyanotic congenital heart diseases and acyanotic congenital heart diseases, congestive heart failure and broken heart syndrome, systemic hypertension and pulmonary hypertension, angina and myocardial infarction, as well as cardiac arrhythmias. Today we shall resume our series on valvular heart diseases by talking about stenosis of the pulmonic valve. The pulmonic valve is located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, right here. Stenosis means a narrow valve, which is going to impede the flow of the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. What are the causes of pulmonic stenosis? What are the symptoms? How can we diagnose it and how can we treat it? Let's find out. Click the like button, click the subscribe button and let's get started. This is my cardiology playlist which has cardiac anatomy, physiology, pharmacology and pathology. Your heart has four chambers, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. The right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary artery, whereas the left ventricle is connected to the aorta. After the deoxygenated blood leaves the right ventricle and flows to the pulmonary trunk, it will flow to the lungs via the two pulmonary arteries. Gas exchange is going to occur in the lungs, where the carbon dioxide is being exhaled and the oxygen is being inhaled. This oxygenated blood is going to return back to the heart through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, and then from the left atrium to the left ventricle, oxygenated blood will be ejected by the left ventricle and into the aorta in order to be distributed to the rest of the body. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop a heart emoji in the comments. Your heart has four valves, the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, the aortic valve, the pulmonic valve. The mitral valve exists between the left atrium and the left ventricle. The tricuspid valve is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The aortic valve is between the left ventricle and the aorta, whereas the pulmonic valve is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. Each one of these four valves can undergo one of two diseases. There is stenosis and there is regurg for each one of these. So there is aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation, pulmonic stenosis and pulmonic regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis and tricuspid regurgitation. By the way, regurgitation is also known as insufficiency, also known as incompetence. What's the difference between stenosis and regurgitation? Stenosis is difficulty at opening, whereas regurgitation is difficulty at closing. Stenosis means that the valve did not open properly. Regurgitation means that the valve did not close properly. Today we're talking about pulmonic stenosis, which is difficulty opening the pulmonic valve. But when is the pulmonic valve supposed to open? It is supposed to open during systole of the ventricles in order to allow the deoxygenated blood to pass from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk. Since the pulmonic valve is supposed to open during systole, therefore the pulmonic stenosis is a systolic murmur. I've told you before that the aortic valve is equivalent to the pulmonic valve. Both of them are semi-lunar valves. Whereas the tricuspid is equivalent to the mitral valve. Both of them are atrioventricular valves. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. So, if aortic stenosis is a systolic murmur, therefore, we can say that similarly, the pulmonic stenosis is a systolic murmur as well, because the pulmonic valve on the right side is equivalent to the aortic valve on the left side. If you want to learn about mitral stenosis, aortic regurg, mitral regurg, tricuspid stenosis, etc., I have a separate video for each one in my cardiology playlist. Remember when we said before that anytime there is volume overload in any chamber of the heart, we expect to find S3 heart sound and we expect the chamber 
that is subject to the volume overload to undergo dilation and eccentric hypertrophy. This is normal, this is eccentric hypertrophy, I'm being dilated. But when we find pressure overload, which is increased after load rather than preload, we expect the chamber to undergo concentric hypertrophy, like this, instead of the normal, and we predict S4 gallop rhythm. Eccentric hypertrophied chamber is good at diastole because it's so big and dilated, but bad at systole because the wall is thin. Conversely, concentric hypertrophy, look at this thick muscle, very good at systole, but bad at diastole. By the way, for a robust anatomy review, check out my anatomy playlist here on YouTube, where I have review videos for each topic in anatomy. I have videos on anatomy of the head and neck, upper extremities, lower extremities, anatomy of the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis and perineum, neuroanatomy, and even embryology. Each one of these topics is covered in three videos. For example, part one, anatomy of the thorax is quick review. Part two is ultimate review. And part three is clinically oriented anatomy of the thorax. So what's going to happen in pulmonic stenosis? My pulmonic valve is narrow, okay? It has difficulty opening. So therefore, when the deoxygenated blood tries to pass from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk, it encounters difficulty. This stenosis increases the afterload or pressure overload on the right side. So therefore, the right side will react and respond to this and will undergo hypertrophy. What kind of hypertrophy? Since this is pressure overload, it's going to be concentric hypertrophy. Concentric right ventricular hypertrophy. We expect to hear S4 gallop rhythm thanks to the pressure overload. And when this gets out of hand, blood will start to accumulate in the right ventricle because the pulmonic valve is narrow. Then the blood will start to accumulate in the right atrium. Then the blood will pile up in the superior and inferior vena cava. If you follow the superior vena cava, we're going to end up with jugular venous distension in the neck veins. And if you follow the inferior vena cava downstairs, first we're going to hit the liver and the liver will be congested causing liver congestion, hepatomegaly, stretching of the liver capsule of glacin, which can be painful, and then portal hypertension with ascites and splenomegaly. Follow the inferior vena cava even lower and you will find my feet. I will develop ankle edema because of all of that swelling. So these are signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure. Something upstairs, something downstairs, and something in the middle. What's upstairs? Jugular venous distension. What's downstairs? Edema of the lower extremities on both sides. And what's in the middle? The hepatomegaly and ascites. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the French toast you're talking about. Pulmonic stenosis means that the pulmonic valve is narrow. Difficulty at opening. But when is the pulmonic valve supposed to open? During ventricular systole. And that's why the murmur of pulmonic stenosis is going to be a systolic murmur. It looks similar to the murmur of aortic stenosis, which is crescendo-decrescendo murmur. But unlike the murmur of aortic stenosis, which is heard in the aortic area, the murmur of pulmonic stenosis is going to be heard over the pulmonic area. Because when the aortic valve is narrow, you will find that the blood is going to have a hard time passing through the narrow aortic valve, but the amount of blood that will pass will pass quickly. The velocity will increase as you decrease the surface area. Does anyone remember A1V1 equals A2V2, the continuity equation? From here we see that the relation between the area and the velocity or the speed is inverse. The narrower the area, the higher the speed. Oh, so I have a narrow valve. Yes, the flow or the volume of blood will decrease, but the speed of that flow is going to increase, which creates turbulent flow, which you can hear with your stethoscope. In which area? You're going to hear it here because that's where the speed is going to hit you. Aortic area is here, pulmonic area is there. Here's the aortic area in which we hear the murmur of aortic stenosis. And here's the pulmonic area in which we hear the murmur of pulmonic stenosis. It's the left second intercostal space at the left uh, sternal border. The murmur of aortic stenosis looks like this. And this is similar to the murmur of pulmonic stenosis. Crescendo, decrescendo murmur, sometimes preceded by the ejection click. This is systolic murmur which means it happens between S1 and S2. And if you feel the patient's pulse, 
while auscultating the murmur, you'll find that the murmur and the pulse happen at the same time because it's a systolic murmur and the pulse is palpated during systole. Here is everything you need to know about pulmonic stenosis in one slide. Why do people have it? It's probably congenital. Don't forget that carcinoid syndrome can also lead to pulmonic stenosis as well as infective endocarditis. Pulmonic stenosis can lead to concentric right ventricular hypertrophy, which increases the oxygen demand on the right side. When I have concentric hypertrophy of the ventricle, this ventricle is very good at systole, but it's very bad at diastole, decreasing ventricular filling and giving me signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure, such as something upstairs, something downstairs, and something in the middle. Upstairs, jugular venous distension. Downstairs, edema at the lower extremities. And if I am bedridden, presacral edema as well. Scrotal edema is not uncommon. The edema can lead to discomfort in the lower extremities. Then in the middle, hepatomegaly, which causes abdominal distension, ascites, positive hepatojugular reflux. And when I am filled with fluid like this, this can increase the body weight. I've told you before and I'm gonna say it again. Anytime your patient gains weight while in the hospital, it is not because the food is delicious. The food of the hospital sucks. Patients gain weight in the hospital because of extracellular fluid volume overload. Think. The murmur of pulmonic stenosis is crescendo decrescendo systolic ejection murmur best heard at the left second intercostal space at the left sternal border. And sometimes we can find widely split S2 heart sound. What does that mean? Normally the heart sounds are S1 and S2. Between S1 and S2 is systole, after S2 is diastole. S1 is just one sound because the mitral and the tricuspid valves close exactly together. But the S2 sound is normally split because the aortic valve closes just before the pulmonic valve. This is normal. But what if I am overwhelming the right side of the heart thanks to the stenosis of the pulmonic valve? Then there will be a delay in the closure of the pulmonic valve. So therefore the P2 component of the S2 heart sound will be shifted to the right, will be delayed a little. And this creates a bigger split between A2 and P2. This is called widely split S2. How can we diagnose pulmonic stenosis? We do so clinically. Anytime you hear a murmur with your stethoscope, the next logical step is to do an echocardiography, preferably with Doppler. If you do an EKG, we find signs of right ventricular enlargement, chest X-ray, cardiomegaly, thanks to the enlargement. Cardiac catheterization can help. How can we treat pulmonic stenosis? If it's mild and asymptomatic, no treatment. If it is severe and symptomatic, surgical options include to repair the valve or to replace the valve. Do you want to learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, cardiac arrhythmias, ARDS, acute limb ischemia, and more? Download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about antiarrhythmics, antihypertensives, antihyperlipidemics, antianginal medications, diuretics, and digoxin, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. And to learn about cardiothoracic surgery, vascular surgery, neurosurgery, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, general surgery, and more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.